Hello beautiful souls, beautiful star seeds. Welcome back to another video on Starseed Academy. My name is Jenny. So today I have something a little bit different for you. I want to talk with you about one of my past lifetimes and that was a lifetime as a planet. So I know that we often talk about this planet, Gaia, and how she is a sentient being, like a soul with emotions, thoughts, ideas. It's a real person in there. It's not just, just like we talk about with source. Source is not just a field of potential. It's a personality, it's a soul. And that is the same as Gaia. So a lot of people don't realize that you can have an incarnation as a planet, a star, a heavenly body like that. And so I wanted to just describe what that was like for you and bring that through. Now, something that I'm going to be doing really differently in this video is I have no notes, okay? So my notebook that you always see in these videos is kind of like my security blanket. And I've really been encouraged lately by my spirit guides as well as human mentors to kind of ditch the notes when I can and to channel the information on the spot instead of beforehand taking the notes and then kind of retelling it to just do it in the moment and let you experience that. Um, let you see kind of the behind the scenes, if you will, or the crazy show, like welcome to the show, and just give you like the real experience. Um, this is what I would do for a client who came to me for a past life reading. On the spot, I would tune into that lifetime wanting to come through and just let the information spill out. So this will kind of give you an idea of what that is like for the clients as well. That being said, of course, remember that you can always sign up to work with me. There's links in the description of this video that will take you to the readings or the healing sessions, as well as there's a membership group, which is so freaking powerful. I, I literally can't even put into words the kind of stuff that we're doing over there. It's so next level. It's so advanced. It's, it's amazing. It's $22 a month and you receive so much value. Like it's ridiculous. In fact, that's an introductory price that I'm going to be bumping up really soon because I'm putting so much into this group. It's insane. Every single week, there are multiple things going on, whether those be huge events, live events, guided experiences, live video, Zoom calls, so much happening over there. So, and a lot of growth happening over there as well for those members. Um, and if you're, if you're inspired or if you feel like you are resonating with my energy, then just know that every single member over in the group, in the membership group, has that same kind of energy. So you would be so at home. It's really important to build these kinds of communities and find each other. So I really encourage you, if you're feeling a resonance and are searching for a community or searching on a way to get to your next level, just try out the membership group. You can always try it out. Um, it's, it's just a month to month kind of thing and see if it works for you. And before we jump fully into the video, also remember to like this video, share it and subscribe to the channel. You'll get new videos here on Starseed Academy every single week, every Sunday and Wednesday. Okay, so let's jump into the heart of this video. Why do I wanna tell you about this? I don't know why. <laughs> it seems important. Um, it seems important. It seems like information that isn't widely known or shared. Um, and whenever I talk about this lifetime experience as being a planet, people always react with a lot of like surprise and a lot of intrigue and interest and always want to know more. I personally would also like to find out more today in this channeling session with you. So let's see what kind of details we can get coming through. Um, and we'll just, yeah, we'll just see what comes through. <sighs> okay. Just give me one moment to connect here. I call upon my team. I call upon Baba. I call upon my sister Gaia. 
and I call upon the gatekeeper to my Akashic Records. Please reveal this information for me for this video. Let the details that need to come through come through. Okay, so the first thing that is coming through is a vision of me approaching my Akashic Records. Now your Akashic Records are where all of your soul memories are kept from all of your lifetimes. And visually, as I'm approaching, it's a big iron gate. And behind the iron gate is almost like a park or a sanctuary of some sort, but it's nighttime, okay? And at the gate, waiting for me as I arrive, is the gatekeeper. So you all have a gatekeeper to your Akashic Records. Um, this is something, sorry, so this is something that, something just flashed into my mind, that the members in the group have experienced because we did a journey to their Akashic Records and they got to meet their gatekeeper and open a past life. So that's kind of what we're doing here today. So whenever you're going to look into your past lives and past incarnations, generally speaking, you would go to your Akashic Records. Now, some people that would look like a library, you know, maybe you would go and sit in a comfy chair, take a book off the shelf, open it up. But for me, it's like a whole sacred place gated with these iron fences and a giant gate at the front that kind of curves around like this. So as I'm approaching, I'm looking through the bars of the gate and on the other side is my gatekeeper. It's a beautiful hawk angel. So it's a combination of this very powerful angel, angelic energy, but she has these giant hawk wings instead of angelic wings. So this just gave me chills. This makes so much sense for me because I have so much avian energy and have such a love for that and, and those lifetimes. And um, in particular, hawks mean a lot to me as well. And then the angelic realm. So this is a very high vibrational being, a super high frequency, and it's an angel with these hawk aspects. So a beautiful angel, she's glowing, emitting a color. It's like uh, the color of a sunset, an orange red color. Um, and the wings are almost striped, like dark brown and cream stripes. Um, going all the way down the wings and then the tips are just tipped in dark brown, very much like a hawk. Okay, anything else about this gatekeeper that wants to come through? Okay, so when I said that, I saw piercing eyes. She has very piercing eyes. Um, they're blue actually, surprisingly blue for a hawk. Um, and she is humanoid, like she's an angel that looks like a human with hawk wings, but there are, there are some hawk features to her face as well. Okay, so I'm seeing a little beak. Um, it's a little yellowish brown, like just a, like a color that you would see on a hawk of this beak, and it's small in place of her nose, but then she has like these human eyes human mouth, human face, other than that. So it's just the little beak. And I do see some feathers kind of at the hairline here. Some feathers kind of going back over her head. Okay, so in place of hair, I'm now seeing it more clearly. It's all feathers going back into the back and into the wings. But her face, neck, and rest of her body is all humanoid. Um, so just to quickly remind you again, what I'm doing right now is pulling the information down from a higher dimension and channeling it here for you, for this video, for me. And this is exactly the experience that you would have if you signed up for a reading. So just keep that in mind. Okay. There's something different about her hands. She went to reach to open the gate for me to come through and her hands looked different. They're not full on like the claws of a hawk or bird, but they are like, a, it's a blend between human fingers and like hawk fingers, talons, because at the ends, it's like pointed, like, 
like like her beak, like that hard material of claws and beaks in a pointed dark orange yellow color, but they don't curve at all. And at the front, like at the beginning, they're fingers and then they almost blend. She's like, she's very blended between these two aspects, like the humanoid angel and then this hawk being. Her energy is really powerful too. Like it reminds me of, and her color too, I guess, reminds me of fiery energy coming off of her. So she's really um, powerful even though it's this divine feminine energy, she's definitely feminine, she's really powerful as well, like a warrior spirit, okay? So anyway, let's go through. So she opened the gate, so we're going through the gate now. And right away, I'm on, as I walk through, right away, I'm on a bridge, okay? So I see the pathways to lifetimes as wooden bridges. Usually, um, kind of like, hanging like a rope style bridge with wooden planks at the bottom and they scoop and they're all kind of interchanging it's like a spider web of these bridges and they all lead to different lifetime experiences but they crisscross too so it's really crazy um so i'm right away i'm on a bridge i'm telling her now what lifetime i want to bring forward the lifetime is me as a planet and so we'll see what happens Okay, so she's directing me now to go straight and left. So I'm walking down these bridges, going and making a curved turn. As I'm walking down the bridge that's going to lead to this lifetime, I'm seeing that instead of being on in this like garden, the, the environment is changing, the landscape is changing. The further I walk into this lifetime, the landscape around the bridge is changing. It's not like a park anymore or this like area with like green plants and trees. It's space now. Like I'm heading down this bridge and it's turning into like just black space with stars and planets. Like I'm heading into outer space. Okay, and as the bridge continues and I walk down towards it, Instead of like on other lifetimes where the bridge ends where the land begins and I step off into the world of wherever the lifetime was, the bridge is going to the center of a planet. So it's taking me to where I would have been as the soul deep in the center of the planet. So I'm not arriving on the surface, I'm going deep within. So I'm walking now down the bridge into the center of this planet. The bridge does end and I step off and I am in a dark environment. It's like a cave. It's like a cave. And oh, it's so beautiful. It opens up like a, like a very large cave. Like there's a huge hollow in the center of this planet. And there are so many crystals, like um, I think called stalactites, where they're like hanging from the ceiling and coming up from the floor. All these crystals sparkling so much sparkling so much glittering and this cave feels really comforting like i know this place like like a womb of sorts like a home a safe place to go that's filled with magic and these crystals and these crystals go in two directions i can receive healing and i can send healing and they lead up to the surface levels of this planet Okay, so it's like my communication um, lines. It's like it's like communication lines to the surface so that I can check in with everything. I can check in with nature. I can check in with the animal kingdom. I can check in with the beings on this planet and see and feel and feel their energy. Everything's about feeling. I'm not seeing that I have that I'm using a lot of clairvoyance or clairaudience. I'm using clair sentience, clear feeling and clear cognizance, clear knowing as the soul at the center of this planet. Those are the two gifts that I'm using to um, to communicate, to to do everything. So to communicate with all of these different layers of the planet, to exist, 
to heal, to make upgrades, to send and receive everything. It's those, it's those two gifts. Okay, so that's interesting. And I don't know then if that means the other ones were turned off or they're just not applicable and they're just in the background. We'll just, we'll just wait and see what else comes through here. Okay, so as the soul in the center of this planet, I'm feeling everything as, I'm seeing like vibrational lines or frequency lines coming down towards me in the core, coming from the surface down towards me in the core, not necessarily through the crystal communication lines as a whole. So I can feel the energetic environment of the planet but it's a constant feedback. It's constant. It's a stream always coming in. So I always know exactly what's going on, like as a frequency, which is really everything. If you know what the frequency is of the outer world, then you know what needs to be done or what healing needs to be done or how it's going and all of those things. So it's coming to me like a frequency and when I want to send it in the other direction, it looks like a heartbeat going out like sound waves, but it's frequency waves going out. Okay, so this is a general, this would, this would affect everything, the whole planet, what's coming in and what's going out with the frequency waves. And then the specific crystals would be my communication to different areas, okay, different territories around the planet, and also different, like I could tap into, like I said, either the nature, like the, the nature, like the planets, the flora and fauna in specific areas, or the animal kingdom, or the beings, or the people, whatever kind of people are on this planet, okay. Good. So I know now how it works. I know how I feel, how I send, and how I tune into specifics. I feel very much like myself. I feel very much like my healer self. So when I'm in healer mode. A little, okay, a little bit of like teacher mode, but mostly healer mode. And like also just being super present and in the moment. Like this was a lifetime about presence. It was so important to just be in the moment so awake and aware like so present that's crazy okay let's see if we can tune into what where this where i am as this planet or who's on the planet like any kind of details about that Okay, so it's definitely outside of the Milky Way. Like it's not here anywhere. And I'm hearing a name of the planet. But it keeps changing slightly. At first it was mint something Sharka and then it was Hartha, Sharka or Hartha, it has three syllables, mm, Hartha, something Hartha. In Tartha, in Hartha. So sometimes when it's hard to pull a word, it's because it's not in the human language. So what we're doing, like when we're getting names of your spirit guides and it's something that's like telepathic, right? Like it's not meant for the human mouth to even try to say or translate. Like it's some crazy sound or something. What I'll receive is a frequency match in a name. So sometimes it's really funny. Like I had somebody who had a gray guide um, like a gray, oh, like my shirt, like a gray being. You know what, how perfect is this shirt for today? It's holding a planet and it's a gray being, like confirmation right there for me that I'm doing the right thing. 
Um, anyway, this person's guide's name was Sam, which I mean, what gray is named Sam? And I realized that it's, it's about the frequency match. So whatever it is in the gray language that matches the word Sam on earth, it's something else, right? But we can only do what we can. So, because like I said, a lot of this is just, they're strictly telepathic. They're not using, I mean, it's, it's barbaric to them to like have to physically use a voice box and like you know like telepathy is so much more advanced for so many reasons so you know we're a little behind the ages with that so yeah so okay so back to the planet so i'm so i'm feeling that it's not going to be like an english word that i can say and that's why it's coming in pieces it's like her three syllables in hartha i mean that's as close as i think i'm going to get right now yeah so i'm going to leave it there so some, so, okay, sorry, a bunch of information when it's being downloaded at once, it will kind of um, make me pause for a second. So you'll see when someone is channeling that they need to take a, a breath for a second, like pause for a second, <sighs> take a breath, and then start the stream again. In my case, it's generally that like, you know, a bunch of messages all tried to come down at once and got clogged and I need it's it's like overwhelming it's like a tidal wave of information and so I breathe and then I just pull on one down like this from crown chakra down so let's try pulling down whatever it was that just tried to overload okay so I'm being shown a vision right now of a planet it's not a star it is a planet there is water and land. It doesn't look like Earth in the sense that it isn't the same kind of colors. There are a lot of hues in, I'm, I'm just seeing purple, I'm seeing orange. Okay, so so the water isn't isn't blue because the sky isn't blue. Okay, that makes sense. Um, the sky is kind of like a peachy color, like a soft orange, and then the water reflects that. And then a lot of the flora and fauna is different shades of purple or blue or both. Yeah. So sometimes, again, uh, you know, I'm trying to translate something into my human brain that maybe we don't have here on Earth. So as you know, like the human brain can only see so many colors, but there are a lot more. So I am downloading it as peaches and oranges and then the land being like, it's, past, it's a lot of pastels, there are some deeper colors, and then the land being like blues and purples. However, I really think that there are colors on this planet that maybe I would not recognize as a human, so maybe I can't explain it beyond that. So that's what I can explain so far for how it looks. Outside of the Milky Way, it's a sister planet. Oh, I just heard sister planet. So there's two planets together in the same what's the word like oh god movement what's the word when a planet has like a track that it follows you know what i mean there's two sister planets and they're they're so together they're like right side by side they're i actually think they're rotating around each other and then going around so like rotating around each other and then going around the sun in this sun or star the um source of light for this planet interesting so two sister planets they look really similar they look really similar one is a little bit bigger than the other very similar colors very similar look together going around that's really cool okay wow you know why that's really cool download i have always called gaia my sister oh my god that's so beautiful 
It was so beautiful. I knew that she was my sister and I knew that I was a planet. And I came here to assist her, my sister, as the planet that she is, you know, through healing and these high frequencies um, and bringing that down here to her on her surface. And I always think of it and thank her and think of it as such a, uh, uh, what's the word? Um, not a pleasure, but I think of it as such a, an honor to be able to walk upon her surface. It's truly an honor. She is such an amazing being. And I've always called her my sister. And now I'm just seeing for the first time that we were sister planets together. She truly is my sister. I knew that I knew her. Okay. Wow. So here we are circulating around this sun, these beautiful colors. What more can come through? So what kind of Let's find out what kind of beings are on this planet. Like, what star nation? What, what's here? Oh, I just got a wave of heat over my body. It's very tropical and hot. I'm seeing very large animals, like, like, like uh, dinosaurs. Okay, like. Like the ones with the really long necks, like the brontosaurus. Oh my God, so many different kinds of dinosaurs. That's, in, that's insane, that is insane. I've always loved dinosaurs, oh my goodness. And they're in the water and they're out of the water and they're, they're back and forth. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. And there are flying um, birds of all kinds some are very bright colored and there are feathers it's not just prehistoric birds with like you know like the leathery dinosaur skin there are feathered beings here too who knew that they could exist simultaneously but i'm seeing like parrots randomly like why parrots i don't know I, i'm gonna look up the meaning of parrots after this because I've, I've been getting so many animal signs lately that's a big sign for me i can feel it so much comes through when you do these lifetimes. Oh my goodness, so many downloads. So dinosaur beings, lots of birds. Okay, so now I'm seeing that it's like really avian. Like that makes so much sense for me. Again, so much avian life here. It's the dominant life. They are living in like these canopies of forests and trees. It's just filled with these crazy beautiful birds. Like, I mean, they look like parrots, but there's something galactic about them. They're not. But all the different crazy, like macaws and all these crazy bright birds that we can think of on Earth, like that, but like galactic looking, like strange shaped, like faces and, and feathers and like multiple colors on each bird, like so bright and like also markings, like black stripes, different Okay, like just so many different, like just, I could be there forever describing all the birds I'm seeing right now. So we'll just stop for a sec there. Okay, so we've got the, the, the ground dwellers of the dinosaurs, which are also in the water. The, the whales and the water beings look more prehistoric than they do on Earth, matching that whole dinosaur vibe. And then we've got these these, this avian world is a whole avian world of these avian beings. They're not, they're not huge. They're not huge. They're like, you know, large for a bird, like maybe hawk sized or something like bigger ones, medium ones, smaller ones. Oh, the birds are so beautiful. I need to stop looking at them or I'm going to be here all day. Okay. What else? We want to know what's like, is there a human style being? Is there, a, is there anything like that? Any kind of star being. I mean, okay, so, so no. And I just heard just visitors. So they will visit. They will visit. Why would they visit? 
Mm. Okay. So, okay. So I'm seeing different kinds of star nations, like different galactic beings visiting. And when I asked why would they visit someone, someone like a voice said vacation, <laughs> like it was kind of like saying it's silly, but it was real. Like it was a real thing. I was like a vacation spot. Oh my God. That's so freaking funny. Oh, here I, I thought it was gonna be some serious, like, I don't know, like some kind of galactic being like, you know, feline beings or avian beings or monkey beings or something. But it's, but it's not, it's, it's this dinosaur world and these avian beings and the underwater, lots of that, lots of colorful fish too. So the water world is reflecting the land world where the bigger ones look prehistoric and then like the small birds don't, well, the small fish don't. They're just like really brightly colored and cute and like all over the place. There's islands too, pretty. Lots of trees, lots of flowers. The flowers are, there's a lot of like green flowers because the stems aren't green. That's random. So like, because the main color of the fauna from what I can tell is like a purple hue, like the grass is purple. Then the stalks of the flowers, like anything that would be green here on earth is more purple. And then some of the flowers are like orange or green. That's really cool. So I'm seeing islands, huge amount of water, much more, I think maybe more than earth. It seems like the whole planet is just giant islands, but not so much big, like not like the continents on earth where it's all connected together, if that makes sense. Okay. So, so, okay. Anything more to come through? Let's check the, the fact that I'm a vacation hub. That's so freaking funny to me. I don't even know why that's so funny. Mm. Okay. So now I'm actually seeing like, just to confirm that I just saw a visual of a galactic being swimming and having fun, like, woo, like swimming with, Swimming with the animals. Okay, so it's like, it's like herbivore land. Okay, so the whole planet I'm just being shown now is like, like herbivores. They're eating, they're eating the plants. That's all they're eating. If they're in the water, they're eating the seaweed, like whales. There's no meat eaters here. That's why it's a vacation hub, because it's so safe. So anybody could just come and, oh yeah, I just felt it, okay, like it's super gentle. All of the animal, can, everything's so gentle and sweet and nice. Wow, that's so beautiful. And then I saw that galactic being, I don't know, kind of looked like an Andromedan being or something. And it, it looks like they were literally riding, like almost like you would ride a dolphin. It was so funny. Okay, okay, another download, the beings, in the water, not just the beings in the water, all the beings, but I was shown the beings in the water are super smart. So they know, like a dolphin would be, like let's play together, let's have fun. They're not shy, they're not afraid of the visitors. So when the visitors come, they are like fully <laughs> submersed in this environment of these fun animals. Um, some, okay, so some of them are dangerous just because of the sheer size. I see some people exercising caution around like their feet for sure. Um, that makes sense. And that there are designated kind of areas where the animals tend to gather and that they don't like put their, they don't stay there. They're not like setting up camp there. They're, you know, outside of that so that they're respecting the space of the animals. But then when they want to go into the forests or into the water that, and they want to connect with them, that the animals are actually really open to that, which is really cool. So here on earth, we have um, a built-in fear of humanity with these animals. So, you know, you're not gonna get that here on earth. You're not gonna get that experience. It makes it really special. And that's that gentle vibe that I'm feeling. Oh my God. This honestly, it makes, I'm getting blinded now. It honestly makes so much sense for my personality. Okay, like I'm a vegetarian, I'm such an animal lover. <sighs> I just, it makes so much sense for who I am as a person that that's what's coming through. And I see myself sending like, yeah, healing out through these crystal sections and receiving so much love back. Oh, okay.
okay, now it's like the animals know I'm there. They sense my presence. How amazing is that? And they're sending me love. Oh, it's just a love bath being this planet. Oh, it feels so good. Okay, so I feel like I, okay. Download after download, holy cow. So I feel like now understanding this planet and the vibe and just seeing all of the animals like sending so much love to me, I realize now that this was a lifetime for me to heal. So I've had some pretty, pretty rough experiences and incarnations where I've lost everything and been really broken. And this was after a really hard one. This was a, so oftentimes you'll pick a lifetime of healing, like a gentle lifetime. So sometimes you go back to the angelic realm. I picked being a planet, a vacation hub, and like enjoying the peace and the tranquility and the gentleness and the kindness of the environment and my animals. My, I, they felt like my family to me. I viewed them as my family, like almost like they were my own creation. And in a way they are, but we know all souls come from source, but the organic matter, like, okay, so you could view like human beings as the creation of Gaia, new download, once you open up the channel, man. And this is so spontaneous, like you never know how a reading is gonna go. That's why I just, I tell that to clients, like I don't know what's gonna come through, just be open. Um, Okay, so humans are Gaia's creation, but the soul within is from source. Make sense? So on this planet, they are my babies, my family, my creations, and the souls are the divine source. I love that. And I could also feel like the visitor's energy when they visit. Like I could f tune in and feel what kind of star nation they were, like what kind of being they were. And because I was so tuned into my planet, I knew right away when somebody landed and like who they were and what they, like I could keep my eye on everything. And I actually feel myself experiencing their joy and their fun, like as that being was like playing in the water and like laughing and all these things, I was feeling all that joy. What a healing lifetime. I love that my sister was there with me. And I see now how we both chose to have those healing experiences together. And here we are on a mission together in a much more difficult, dense environment. Her as the planet, me on the surface, still connected. And I just saw that a planet's, the soul of a planet can switch out before the planet dies. Wow. So she doesn't have to be, and hasn't been here the whole go souls cycle through and take turns because it would be too much too long maybe not on one of those happy planets but here on earth souls are okay so they have like a stint of a timeline and then they cycle out and another one comes in that's the soul of the planet gaia they take on gaia's persona or whatever amazing amazing oh my god i don't know if there's anything else that i want to add to this I really can't wait to see your comments on this. Like, what is it like for you to come behind the scenes into what channeling looks like? That was a lot of downloads. That was so cool. Just, I think that's all that's wanting to come through. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I just saw like someone nodding their head. Yep. Yeah, we're good. That's everything. Amazing. Oh, thank you so much for joining me in this little experiment. So I think that I will try to incorporate um, live channeling more often on this channel. I don't know how much, but I do think it's really powerful because you're like, and this is why I switched my readings over from written readings to this experience, because it's so much more powerful to be in the energy with me. As the process is happening, you're gonna be receiving activations, energetic frequencies, upgrades, signs, confirmations like I it's too important and I don't want you to miss the whole the process is a part of the reading is what I'm saying the process is a part of what you're meant to experience as the client so that's why they're live like this now um of course if you sign up for a reading with me um then you can specifically ask which lifetime you'd like to see or you can leave that open to your guides and often more than one will come through up to three sometimes and then there's another reading where you can meet your guides 
again, at least one, but up to three guides will come through where I describe them, where they're from, how they know you, their message for you and all of that. And then the best selling reading is the, called the Complete Cosmic Reading. It's both in one. It's the guides and the lifetimes all together. And you get an opportunity to like ask questions throughout the experience. Whereas right now, this is very one way. Um, but yeah, I just really, I'm looking forward to your comments. So thank you so much for watching this. If you're still here at the end, thank you so much for your support. I love you all so much. Um, feel free to connect with me if you're wanting a reading of your own. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. And before we go, please remember to listen to your heart and the quiet voice within. Because you are so much more than the body you are in. Thank you so much, beautiful soul.